summer here at MBC. We've been exploring what it looks like to follow Jesus here, there, and everywhere. If you want to follow Jesus, you'll need to have faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. It's like our memory verse this month tells us. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. Let's do it one more time because next week is our contest. Faith is being sure of what we hope for. It is being sure of what we do not see. Hebrews 11, 1. Yeah. 
Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. We're talking about faith, which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. I see something really cool. What's even more cool is what you can make with these. Well, what are they? Mosaic tiles. Oh, for like stepping stones and stuff. Or for some of the most amazing art in the world. Let's move. This is Park Guay in Barcelona, Spain. That whole long wall is just full of mosaic tiles. Yep, including this little guy. Aww. And check this out. Wait, is that a staircase? Yep, the 16th Avenue tiled steps in San Francisco. It's like walkable art. You have to look down for this one too. Okay, that is epic. Exactly. It's the great pavement of the Westminster Abbey in London, England. King Henry VIII commissioned it to show the story of creation. This is a close-up. It's about 750 years old. I wonder how many feet have walked across that. Millions and millions, I bet. All right, now I'm itching to create. That's great, but first, we have a challenge. A sticky one. Which is? We gotta figure out which glue to use. Then, let's do it. So what have we got here? Exhibit A, your classic school glue. Exhibit B, hot glue. You need to stick with a grown-up to use a hot glue gun. I see what you did there. And exhibit C, super glue. Grown-up alert number two. If we want to make a mosaic, we need to stick these glass tesserae. Slow down, vocabulary queen. Tesserae? Tessery, a small tile, glass, or other material used in the construction of a mosaic. That's better. We need to stick these glass tessery to this tile base. So, we're gonna test each glue to see how well it sticks the tiles together? You got it. A good glue has both strong adhesion and cohesion. You just did it again. Adhesion is the ability of a glue to stick to a surface. Cohesion is the ability of a glue to stick to itself. I guess that makes sense. If the glue doesn't stick to itself, then you just get two separate layers of glue paint. Bingo. So let's stick to it. Up first, school glue. Hot glue's ready. There we go. Okay. And finally, super glue. Now we could sit and watch the glue dry for 10 minutes. Or we could do this. Now I'm gonna see if I can pop them off with a little pressure. Nope. Oh. Nope. School glue down. We still have hot glue and super glue in the running. Now we try greater pressure to pry them off. Nope. Nope. I guess we have a tie. Looks like they both stuck it out. I'm ready to get my mosaic on. But first, it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Acts, which tells us the story of the early church. But before Acts, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly with the help of God's Spirit. When the believers faced trouble in Jerusalem, many of them scattered to other places, taking the news of Jesus everywhere they went. But other believers still remained in Jerusalem. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Erica. During this time, King Herod ruled over Judea. He was Jewish, but served the Roman government. And just like the Jewish religious leaders, he wanted to stamp out the Jesus movement. Herod even arrested the apostle James and had him killed. 
When Herod saw how much this pleased the religious leaders, he sent soldiers to arrest Peter too. Now, Herod had seen strange things happen among the believers. Like when Peter and the other apostles had been arrested before, they had mysteriously turned up back in the temple courts. Herod was not taking any chances. He had Peter chained up between two guards with two more guards at the door. Four separate groups of soldiers were assigned to the job. Herod made plans to bring Peter out for a big public trial right after the Passover festival. But while Peter was stuck in prison, the other believers didn't give in to despair. Day and night, they prayed to God. Please, Jesus, save Peter. You alone have the power to free him. The night before Peter was to be put on trial, he managed to sleep. I don't know how. This cannot have been comfortable. All chained up? As Peter slept, an angel appeared, and light blazed in the dark cell. Apparently, this wasn't enough to wake Peter, because the angel struck him on the side to wake him up. What? Uh, I'm awake. Quick, get up. And just like that, the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Put on your clothes and sandals. Put on your coat. Follow me. Peter did exactly as the angel said, but the whole time, he was convinced that he was dreaming. They passed the first set of guards, and then a second set of guards, but no one seemed to notice them at all. When Peter and the angel arrived at the heavy iron bars leading into the city, the gate opened, seemingly all by itself. Peter followed the angel right out of the prison and down the street. When they reached the end of the street, the angel disappeared. Peter shook himself and looked around, and the truth hit him all at once. This was no dream. It was real life. Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches. I bet Peter felt like doing a dance right there in the street. Instead of awaiting trial and death in the morning, he was free, and he could not wait to share the news. Peter headed straight for the home of his friend Mark's mother, Mary, where the believers often met to pray. He knocked as loudly as he dared. At last, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Who is that? It's me, Peter. When Rhoda realized it was Peter, she was so excited to tell everyone that she ran back inside without actually opening the door first. It's Peter. Peter's at the door. You're out of your mind. It must be his angel. But in the midst of this debate, Peter kept knocking. When they finally opened the door, they were absolutely amazed to discover that it actually was Peter. There was a huge commotion, but Peter signaled for them to be quiet. Then he explained the whole story. Tell the other believers about this. After sharing his story, Peter left the believers. In the morning, the prison guards were shocked to discover that Peter was gone. They searched everywhere. And when they couldn't find him, Herod was so enraged, he had the guards killed. But in spite of all this, the early church continued to grow. The end. I bet Rhoda got teased for a long time about leaving Peter at the door. You pray so hard for something, but sometimes it can still be a surprise when you actually get it. So, what's our part in the story? Well, you may never end up in prison like Peter, but there will be times when you feel completely stuck with no way through. Maybe you've studied and studied, but you just can't seem to understand math. Or you've been trying really hard to be kind to your younger sister, but every time she bugs you, you can't help from snapping at her. I remember when I started at my new school, it was really hard for me to make new friends. I felt so alone. It's tough feeling stuck, but when you're in a place like that, you can be certain of one thing. No matter how frustrated or alone you feel, God is right there with you. When you ask God for help, God promises to provide patience, perseverance, encouragement, and hope. And sooner or later, you will get through it. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> For sure. See y'all next time. <laughs> Bye. So here's the thing. God is with you, even when you feel stuck. I've been trying to imagine what an angel might look like.
Me too. Think we're anywhere close? I think if we actually saw an angel, it would blow our minds. True story. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Peter was stuck in prison, but God answered the prayers of the people. God set Peter free with the help of an angel. Now I know we all feel stuck sometimes, but here's the great news. God is with you even when you feel stuck. Say that with me. God is with you even when you feel stuck. Maybe you're trying to get your homework done, but you're constantly getting distracted by the things happening around you. Or maybe you can't seem to make a goal that you set for yourself in a sport or on an instrument. Maybe things aren't going well with your family and you're hoping they'll get better, but nothing seems to be changing. But God is with you even when you feel stuck. It's really hard when we feel stuck. But when you feel like that, you can be certain of one thing. No matter how frustrated or alone you feel, God is right there with you. When you ask God for help, God will give you strength and peace and hope that maybe things will get unstuck soon. Let's head over to the tables and talk some more about what we heard today.